The first uh, collectivist explanation for health inequalities, why we have them, is the treatment of disabled people. Now, collectivists would say that in the UK, disabled people are treated in such a way that um, their disabilities are exacerbated, made worse by the way that they are treated, particularly by the UK government, um, and that actually their health is being made worse because of that. Now, what we need to understand in order to understand that argument is that the UK government has consistently prioritised getting disabled people into work rather than supporting them and um, meeting their needs. Um, this comes from kind of welfare reform, which came at the start of this Conservative government in 2010, when they decided that one of the big problems in the UK, one of the reasons why the UK didn't have enough money, um, was because they were spending too much money on benefits. And we'll talk in a lot more detail about a lot of these um, reforms, which led to um, really huge cuts in people's benefits, damaging uh, lives and making it much harder for people to get by. Um, but particularly they looked at this idea of what was called disability benefit. It's changed lots of names since then. We'll talk more when we look at government strategies in terms of what it's actually called now. But basically the money that is paid to people who are too, who are unable to work because of a disability or illness. Um, that money is paid to them to help meet their needs. They cannot work. They cannot provide, get, earn the money that they need to look after themselves. And so the government provides them with that money. Now, the Conservative government decided that too many people were what, you, what they called scroungers. They, you know, they were um, people who were making up a disability or exaggerating an illness or basically saying they were too ill to work when in fact they were fit to work. And they felt they could save huge amounts of money by basically getting those people back into work. They also argued it would help the economy to have more people working rather than spending money on benefits. So what they did is they created this, this test basically called the Work Capability Assessment, which is a test essentially to, work, to find out, are you what they call fit for work? Are you able to do a job? Um, and this has been heavily, heavily criticised, as you might imagine, for uh, by all sorts of different people, um, for forcing seriously ill and disabled people into work that is totally unsuitable, that's led to increased ill health and even death. Because if you are seen as fit to work according to this test, but you can't work, even if your doctor said that you should not be working or you're not physically not capable of working, then you will not get disability benefit. You will not get that money that's, that meets your needs. So you won't get that money to meet your needs and you won't be able to get a job in order to earn money and, and meet your needs. So basically you end up with nothing and people have literally starved because their disability benefit has been cut off by the, by the UK government. So an example of that impact that's shown uh, that, that it's had was shown in figures the government was forced to release in 2015. They didn't want to release these figures, but they were forced to by a freedom of information request. And these showed that 2,650 people died soon after being declared fit for work. So they were declared fit for work, they were ready to go, and then they died. That doesn't sound very fit for work. Now, some of them perhaps got hit by buses or whatever, but the vast majority of them were, were ill, went to get this work capability assessment. The work capability assessment said they could work and they were forced to either do work was totally inappropriate and ended up driving them into an early grave, or they couldn't get disability benefit anymore because they were seen as fit to work and they couldn't get work, so they had no money. So the pressure group, uh, disabled people against cuts, have argued that thousands of disab disabled people are what's called sanctioned, which basically means their benefits are withheld every month. And they face the humiliation of having to prove the health issues over and over and over again to staff who just simply don't believe them. And this is particularly complex when you're talking about health issues that are perhaps um, more uh, what we call invisible disabilities. So, you know, not somebody who's missing a leg or an arm, but perhaps somebody who has um, a chronic illness, somebody who has severe mental health issues. These people are not able to work, but but the work capability assessment um, often finds them fit to work. And part of that is because the work capability assessment essentially asks really basic questions like, can you sit down for 20 minutes? Um, can you pick up a pound coin using your hands? That's a real question. Um, 
can you walk from that door to over to this chair? And treat those as if you can do those things, then you must be able to work. Um, rather than actually saying, well, what, what, what health issues do you have? What's your disability? How can we support you with that? It basically says, if you can do these really basic things, then that means you're fit for work and you should be able to get a job. Um, and this argument that the, the work capability assessment isn't fit for purpose, that it's causing lots of problems, um, is supported by a lot of collectivists. And they point out that the assessment has proven to be massively flawed. And 67% of people who were found fit to work and appealed, basically said, I'm not fit to work, and went to an appeal, had the verdict reversed. So two thirds of people who were found fit to work shouldn't have been found fit to work. They were not fit to work. They ticked all these boxes on this test, but this test just wasn't fit for purpose. The problem is, even those who had the verdict reversed were forced to go without the financial support for many months because the appeal process takes ages. So they were found fit to work, they had the disability benefit cut, they appealed it, they couldn't go to work in that time, so they went without any kind of support for months and months and months. Um, and the work capability assessment has been linked to depression, to illness, and even death among those found fit to work. Now, that argument is opposed by many collectivists because they argue that the changes to the benefit system don't really affect real disabled people. They say we have to stop people scrounging, we have to stop people cheating the benefit system. They argue it's more important to stop fraud and perhaps some real disabled people, whatever that means, will slip through the cracks, but it's more important to stop the fraud. Um, and it's only going to have an impact on fit and healthy people who are pretending to be disabled, which is obviously nonsense, but, you know, we have to have a negative evaluation. Um, you kept the political party claim in 2013 that 75% of incapacity benefit claimants, that's what you used to call incapacity benefit, 75% of them are fit and healthy. Where they got that number from, I have no idea. I mean, I can have a guess where they pulled it from. Um, but the U but it's just made up. But this is a, a real stereotype about, about people quote unquote, living on benefits, um, often perpetuated by the media. And the UK government has insisted that the work capability assessment is essential to prevent benefit fraud. And again, that's their argument, not that it's helping people, um, but they don't want to give away any money. And this, this WCA, the work capability assessment, basically means that they keep the amount of money that they give away as low as possible. So you'll see that there are a couple of videos below here I'd like you to watch and, and take some notes under the following headings. How disabled people are treated, the impact on disabled people, and some key quotations if there are any key uh, statements or people making it. So we've got one from The Guardian and uh, one from Tyneside's Mind um, uh, in Newcastle, um, which is more of a sort of um, dramatic piece, but it's really, really powerful. It's, you know, a lot about kind of uh, people who have mental health issues and how the work capability assessment is affecting them. And then finally, um, an interview with the director, uh, Ken Loach, who made a film that we're going to watch later in the course, um, all about somebody uh, who underwent the work capability assessment. Um, so I'd like you to take those notes. Then task two, overall, do you agree that how the government treats disabled people is contributing towards health inequalities? Um, and then, oh, I'll put task two on that one. It'll be changed by the time you get this. Uh, using the text above and including information from your notes on the videos, write a PEEE paragraph on the topic of treatment of disabled people. So a question that we're going to use to kind of frame that is poverty is the main cause of poor health. So you might want to start with um, uh, think about your, your points question, statement, you could phrase it like, um, although poverty is a major cause of poor health, actually the government's treatment of disabled people is a much bigger cause. Okay, something like that. So hope that helps. Um, give it your best shot. And remember, when we're thinking about our Peter Lee paragraphs, I'd love it. In an ideal world, it'd be amazing if you included information from the videos, from what I'm saying, from the text, from all of that stuff together. But the key thing is that you've got something in your jotter that has your point, explain, example, uh, collective uh, evaluation, positive, individualist evaluation, negative. That's all you need. So if you just take that from the text, that's okay as well.